Okay, so next up we have... Uh, Thanks. We're going to have Shardell Rizgala, and he, he is going to talk with us about uh, smart buildings and the integration of uh, smart technologies within those buildings. If you've seen a, uh, if you've seen a uh, smart room, how many, how many people have actually been in a smart room or seen a smart room? Smart okay. hospital. Smart hospital maybe or something, right? So really pretty awesome uh, stuff. So Full without audience. further ado, uh, Shardell. The first time I ever uh, went into a smart room, I was just like, this is just amazing, amazing stuff. Now the thing I liked most about it was the yeah. Xbox. Uh, but the Xbox actually connected to all kinds of other things as well. It connected me uh, to my providers. It connected me to my entire clinical team and my diet. So, yeah. thank you very much, Shardell. Thank you. Good morning. Good afternoon. Uh, thank you, Cerner, for being here. Thank you, Honeywell, guys, friends, everybody. So, we'll be talking about the smart building, a smart hospital in specific. So, and the Cerner, they have chose a very challenging theme for this year. It's today and tomorrow. And in technology, it's so hard to predict tomorrow. But uh, a little bit, uh, we, will, we, we will do our best uh, doing this. So we have, first of all, identified main of the main challenges or pain point we have today in a healthcare facility, in a hospital. And that is related to the admission and discharge and the patient overall time uh, inside a hospital. Okay? So if you ask any patient, what would mean for a patient a smart hospital? For a patient, a smart hospital is a hospital where you stay the less amount of time required. So in this way, staying less time in a hospital, you will be saving all kinds of resources inside from inside this hospital we have identified five areas where today there is technology that is improving but tomorrow is totally impressive the first one is to become the healthcare facility to become the internet of me so to shorten the time frame of people staying inside hospitals you need to take the take care of them while they are outside of the hospital as well so today we have wearables that we are wearing that are transmitting our blood pressure, transmitting our heart rate, etc. Tomorrow we will have more advanced equipments that will use the same technology to transfer much more information that helps the patient stay outside of the hospital if it's not needed to be admitted. The second point is the outcome economy. The outcome economy means that we are all aware about the real-time location system. We heard about it, the tracking solutions, etc. But have this been used in a hospital to improve a workflow? I will give you an example how to improve a workflow. So if, if the patient coming from his home, arriving to the hospital, today the patient has to wait a certain amount of time until he's admitted, until his hospital information system or his electronic medical record checked and uh, 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 sent to the physician. Now using this technology in the future and tomorrow, it will enable the hospital to identify the patient when he arrives to the parking lot and he will have, when, when reaching the front desk at the hospital, he will have all his data ready to be admitted. So at that, uh, at that segment of time, the initial phase of time, we are reducing it to the maximum. The technology will help reducing it to the maximum. Now the third point is the platform. And the platform is a significant player in changing a, a standard hospital to a smart hospital. To a smart hospital that helps doing everything faster. Cerner, HIS systems, electronic medical records, these are, there is a massive amount of data that is there. And the platform is enhancing. Now we, are, we started to talk about the blockchain, etc. So the platform itself is offering a massive advantage of data sharing and data storage. The fourth point is intelligent enterprise. Intelligent enterprise is not just related to clinical area, it's related to all the areas inside the hospital. Because treating a patient is not just the medical equipment. Essentially, it's the medical equipment. 
Then we have the communication system inside the hospital. We have to realize that inside the hospital there is the patient and the caregiver. And if both of them work in harmony and there is a healthy environment in the hospital, we will be reaching a smarter hospital. The fifth point is the workforce reimagined. In the Gulf region, the one of the pain points inside a hospital is the turnover of the caregivers. So we train the, the caregivers, we train the nurses, and after six months, they switch to another hospital or they leave the hospital to another organization. And why is that? Why nurses leave their hospitals to another hospital? There is a study made by the uh, nursing journal. They said that an average uh, walking distance per day per nurses is nine kilometers. First of all, they will stay in shape. Yeah, that's good. But it's a huge amount of walking that they are doing on a daily basis. And they are doing it for what? They either they are searching for medical equipments, so they don't have the technology to track their equipments. They are walking around because they are following up each patient because they don't have the right voice over IP and audio communication platforms. They are moving around a lot because they don't have the right processes. So they, they want to make sure that the housekeeping, they finished uh, uh, cleaning the patient room. They want to make sure that the room from a maintenance side, it's ready to adopt or to uh, recept the next patient. So all of this, when it comes together, it enhances the workflow inside the hospital and accordingly the environment will be healthy for both the patient and the people working inside the hospital. Now what we are doing in this regard, what we are doing in these five areas of improvement, of course we cannot as Honeywell cover the overall ecosystem. There are many players in the market that they complement each other. We are here at Cerner, Cerner they are playing an massive role in the data sharing and the hospital information system. From our side, the technology that we are using, it enables at the end of the day for a better quality of care, reduced number, etc. Why we're, how we're doing it, I will show you a holistic example of our value proposition that complements uh, into the ecosystem. We, have, we start by the nurse call system, we have the most advanced voice over IP communication system that has a bad management and workflow solution. So using our system, you turn by default from a paper uh, hospital to a digital hospital. Digital hospital where we, the nurses don't need to register by hand every single vital sign that they take from the patients. And doing this, you will be registering in real time the information and the vital, si vital signs of patients. And this is, I, I be, do you believe that is smart or not? It is smart. Next to that, we have all the security and safety portfolio that complements also uh, uh, the overall ELV system inside the hospital. And that applies to specific areas as well that are directly related to the patient safety. So we need the, the patient to stay the smallest amount of time inside the hospital, but we need also to have him secured. Let's take, for example, the infant security system. Okay? The power of integrating all these systems together into one ecosystem, this is the comparative advantage of Honeywell today in the market. Because we do all of this without the struggle and the high risk of that integration failure. Any questions so far? Okay, so what, what we have been saying, as much as it looks simple, this is what is happening behind it. This is the power of engineering. Okay, now what we know as a traditional uh, communication system and workflow inside a hospital, as you see, Cerner, they displayed the most powerful mobile behind you directly. Okay, and really this is a game-changing unit because today in a smart hospital everything in the hospital is rooted toward a handheld device. A handheld device that replaces all of this. Do you know what is this? Do you know what is this? Anyone knows what is this? You just won a trophy. 
This is a barcode scanner to make sure that we are giving the right medication to the right patient. Okay? And it's very important. Who knows what is this? It's easy. That's easy. That's easy. That's the duct phone. Yes, I will give you one. Don't worry. Don't worry. That's one. That's a duct phone. So the point in here that nurses used to carry this kind of belt. Additional to that, they have the pagers. They have the access control cards to, to access special areas. What if all of this is combined in one device? And that device gets the nurse call alerts, the alarm alerts, gets the vital signs, gets any abnormal uh, measurement from patients to the doctor, and gets into direct uh, 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 input to the hospital information system. And this kind of devices integrated with an advanced hospital information system like we have in here, having a barcode scanner, so you make sure in real time that you have zero medication error in a hospital. So a smart hospital is in fact a hospital that ensures that there is no error that will cause any damage to patients. So delivering healthcare and increasing to the utmost level of safety and security inside the hospital. So all of this is now, is tomorrow will be combined in this one unit. And one unit, do you think, how much it's, it's uh, cost effective from a total cost of ownership. You don't, you do, you don't have multi uh, channels to deal with, multi systems to take care of, maintenance, preventive maintenance. Now I'm talking to the guys who, who works or operate or manage hospitals. And this is a very important point because consolidating all of this in a real time live uh, registration of information and that amount of data, that massive amount of data, which will enable, at the, after all, the cognitive learning. If we don't have that amount of information, there is no artificial intelligence. And I still have 63 slides to end. I'm okay. kidding. Okay. So this, uh, this is part of uh, the visualization on the unit. It's, not, it's, uh, it's a dynamic unit that is moving, as I said earlier, the hospital into a smart one. You can see even the uh, vital signs, it can be shown, transmitted either by Bluetooth or Wi-Fi, all across the hospital. Now, I said in the beginning that we, the smart hospital that is a hospital that provides the less amount of time for the patient inside the hospital. So you want to take care of your patient while he's also outside of the hospital. And this, this is where the telemedicine comes. And Honeywell has been in this business since 10 years ago. Today, of course, we are leveraging uh, the amount of uh, uh, exponential uh, augmentation uh, in the ho hospital information system development to use that kind of data. Without hospital information system, that's a nonsense. Right? Uh, that's why we are partners. Okay? So we have a telemedicine connected to overall hospital, which is also connected inside. And these are our couple of our experiences in uh, establishing connected and smart projects. Okay? Of course, the list is a little bit uh, short, a little bit short. But we are still at the beginning of that era. I would like to thank you all for your attention. Thank you for being here. And uh, if you have any question. That's thank good. you very much, Shardell. Thank you. Any questions for Shardell? Do you? I still have one trophy with me. <laughs> then I have a question for you. Go ahead. You are organizing everything here. What if happens that the system fails down. So what is your risk mitigation? What is your plan B? First, of all, is, is down? first of all, we will blame Cerner for it. This is uh, always the IT and Cerner and the others. Yeah. But what look, about the patient? Look, what about the medication? So you, you, you can prove that they have 99. Oh. 
Oh, we have, uh, excuse me, you, can, can you repeat it on the mic, please? <laughs> Especially when it's depend on a network. It's all right, but just okay. Any system which depend on a network, you should consider that network sometime will be down. So that's why you should have a downtime procedure plan. Especially the most essential thing, like a nurse call system, should be totally isolated system. Integrated, yes, but at the same time, if a network down, should be isolated because this is affect patient safety direct. When you click code. So and with Cerner, we have the downtime procedure for each solution. We have it, and we have two type of downtime, schedule and non-schedule. Non-schedule yeah. when suddenly it's down, something like this, and schedule that you plan it with the end user. And so downtime, we take consideration first, the patient. So any uh, system that affect patient directly, it should be isolated beside the integration as well. Yeah, let me add to this. When integrating different electrical and communication systems together, of course the risk is high. At Honeywell, we are not integrating system to system. We are getting all the systems in one platform. So we reduced the risk to the, to the minimum and we, we took it to one EBI, one platform that runs all the show. Okay? So first of all, the first advantage, you don't have different workstations that the users works on. So they get into one station and they access all the systems. They take one handheld and they get everything from all the systems. Okay? And that's, that was the main challenge before getting into one platform. Did we answer your question? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for asking that question. I was not eager for this. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Forget about the uh, uh, other questions? So I do have one for you. Um, yeah, go ahead. So uh, you said it's very important. To, uh, smart is quality care. So it's kind of one of the same, right? This is what we mean. Yeah. And, um, and you're also connecting the continuum. Yeah. So while it's a acute care facility is one place where it is, we want you out of the hospital and back to your home and also then successfully using these devices at home. Yeah. So what do you feel is, is uh, the next uh, step for us when it comes to like kind of the integration of these devices? Um, who's doing it like the best in addition to Honeywell and, and others? Um, tell us a little bit about what you see as part of the way forward and the vision that you'll see in 2018, 19, and 20, like kind of nearer term. Look, the comparative advantage of Honeywell in the market is not into system to system comparison. It's the overall combination of the entire portfolio. So uh, if you, if you want to take one application into one application in the market, the technology is too uh, close to each other. The, pain, the, the, the important point in here is to get a solid and robust communication and integration between these different systems because any failure and any part of it, it will cause a dramatic uh, disaster inside the hospital. So the comparative advantage that we have is that we have a solid and robust one platform that runs all of these together. Now, what, when, where we are going into the future is to have this not just inside a, a hospital or a closed area where you can just use Wi-Fi or any other uh, local area uh, technologies, but going outside of that to a GPS or personalized tracking uh, uh, devices that can automatically send from anywhere, from anywhere your uh, specific vital signs that alerts emergency to come wherever you are. So that kind of extreme mobility for both the patient and the caregiver to connect at any given point. I believe this is where we are going. A, lo a unlocalized point of care. Awesome. That, and, and I'm hoping we get there very soon. And with Honeywell, I'm sure we will. Yeah, thank, thank you so much, Sherda. Thank you for Sherda having us. Thank you so much. Thank you. <laughs>